So, just a quick reminder of what GROT stands for in our decision-making process. Number one, create the gap between the stimulus and the response. Remember, the bigger the gap, the more measured the response. Number two, make sure you drive down uncertainty so that you're making uh, decisions with a high level rather than low level of, uh, of uncertainty. So that means more facts, fewer assumptions, and fewer don't knows. Um, risk. Do the risk assessment. Make sure that risk assessment is data driven. Um, generate options. Remember, good decision makers don't just have one or two options, they will have three or four options. And then finally, identifying your trade offs. What are you prepared to give in on? What are you prepared to stand by? And then ultimately, making the decision. So this is the case study. What I've done is to choose a non-work related case study, but I've chosen something that certainly the parents amongst you will identify with. Um, when your 18-year-old comes to you, certainly the UK at least, having passed their driving test, and they are now legally allowed to go out onto the road. Now for me as a parent, that was, a, a, and I think for most parents, is particularly challenging. You've nurtured this, this child from uh, round zero to 18, and then suddenly you see them disappear off in a car uh, around, along the, the roads of your cities and towns. It's a pretty nerve-wracking experience. And, and it's one where decision-making is really, really key. So I'm going to walk you through this decision-making process using this as an example. Now, it's not a perfect process. No process is, but hopefully you'll agree at the end of this, at least when you get to the decision, you can honestly say, well, we did consider all of the factors and we made the best decision available to us at that time. So, purchasing a car for your 18 year old. Um, number one, create the gap. Your son or daughter comes along and says, mum, dad, this is the car I'd like to buy or I'd like you to help me buy this red, fast, flimsy rust bucket. Um, instinctively, as a parent, you look at that and go, absolutely no way. But also, as a parent, you know that as soon as you say no to them as an 18-year-old, that means yes. So if you react emotionally, uh, it's far more likely they're going to go and pursue purchasing that car without your uh, approval anyway. So this is the, well, okay, let's think about it. Let's look at what options there are available. This is when you create that space between the stimulus, I want this car, and your response. Um, then you start to drive down the uncertainty. So you look at that model and you start to get the, the facts around performance, around uh, miles, per gallon or, miles per gallon or insurance category or the levels of warranty, what the safety ratings are. So there's lots of facts that we can get. Um, there's assumptions that we have to make, but they're fairly reliable assumptions around uh, reliability. Um, service history, how much it's going to cost per service. Uh, street credibility, that's a big assumption because certainly for an 18 year old, that's a big deal. Um, what you don't know is how they're going to drive that car or any car when you're not sat by the side of them or in the back. So that is by no means a comprehensive list, but it gives you a sense of the types of things that you can populate this with. And it does encourage you to get as much in the way of facts as you can and to drive down the level of uncertainty. Now we're into what matters most to parents, which is the assessment of risk of that vehicle versus other models or other vehicles. And this is where we apply the severity of harm, the probability of that harm occurring. Uh, detectability is, a, is not really an issue. And this is when you start to rate each of the cars that you've shortlisted in terms of severity of harm. If this is a naught to 60 in, I don't know, five seconds, that's kind of high risk. Uh, the probability of that occurring, well, that does depend. So this is when you go through that structured risk assessment, particularly with a view of how do I reduce severity of harm? For example, buying a car with a higher safety rating. How do I um, assess the or reduce the probability of occurrence? So, for example, if you're concerned about how your, your uh, child is going to drive the car, you can purchase what I call spying the cabs. In fact, many insurance companies insist 
before they ensure them that you fix this thing in your car and it actually gives you, as a parent, visibility of speed, braking, um, great idea. I loved it. My kids hated it. Uh, but anyway, you then get down to really identifying shortlisting the options. Is it Model A? Is it Model B? Or is it Model C? And these options are influenced by your assessment of risk and how you reduce that severity or reduce that probability of occurrence. But at least this process takes you through that in a fairly structured and measured way uh, your kids may not agree with it, but at least they see the process that you've actually used. And then ultimately, you get to trade-offs. And this is where there are things that you are not, you identify those things that you are not prepared to give in on. So for us, my wife and I, it was, um, you know, we're not going to compromise on safety. And frankly, that red fast rust bucket is dangerous and there is no way you're going to get it. Um, the spy and the cap, uh, we weren't going to compromise on that. In fact, uh, it brought down the insurance, so there was a win-win there as well. But, you know, as a parent, we were prepared to compromise on the efficiency. You know, you can have a faster, uh, a, maybe a less efficient car, providing it's safe. Um, or maybe insurance. Well, that all depends on who's paying. So that's just an illustration um, of how you would apply this process. Again, it's not perfect, but what it does do is to take you through in an organized, measured way to a decision that at least you can see the process. Um, and if you're interested, my son ended up driving my, well, my wife's old Volvo. Uh, very low on street credibility, but ticked all of the other boxes, and uh, we got to a satisfactory outcome.